thank you for participating this evening. We are now joined by Celeste Taylor and will begin the press conference. Please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question will go to Donnie. Donnie, please unmute yourself. State your full name and affiliation. Donnie Woods here with World Exposure Report. Wow, what a game. Um, this was a real grinded out, tougher team one kind of game. What makes you so tough to be able to win these grinded out games? I mean, I honestly have no words right now, but we've been saying this from the beginning. Um, we work hard consistently. From the first time that I met this coaching staff, we put our heads down and we worked. Um, whether it was the summer workouts, running on the track at 6 o'clock in the morning for six weeks straight till right before we got here, till when we're here and we're practicing and we're getting prepared for these next games, we work every single day. We put our heads down and we go to work. We just fight. Um, we have the phrase, the Texas fight, and I think that we've shown that throughout this whole tournament. Our next question will go to Danny. Danny, please unmute yourself. State your name and affiliation. Danny Davis, Austin American Statesman. Celeste, you y'all knew what you were going up against offensively with this Maryland team. What was working for you guys, especially after that start when they went up 13 to 2? I mean, basketball is a game of runs. So, you know, they went on their run early and we came back and we shut them down. Uh, there were people out there saying that they was going to hang 100 on us. Um, and I think we took that personal. Every last one of us took that personal. And so we just went out there and we said, we need to play defense. Like, we know we can score, but we have to play defense and we have to get stops. And so I think that's what we did. Um, we helped each other. And yeah. Our next question will go to Dennis. Dennis, please unmute yourself. State your name and affiliation. Yeah, Dennis Della Pena, Fox 7 Austin Sports. Celeste, the... Uh, like you said, you guys have been working hard all year, but the last few weeks you're clicking at a, an extremely high level. What What is going on? Why are you guys clicking so well right now? I mean, we've definitely gotten a lot more time together to spend together, um, getting to know each other, building our chemistry throughout the season even. You know, it's really hard when you're so secluded from your teammates um, back in back at, in Austin. You know, we are we're very strict. Our, Call our university is really strict on what we can do and what we can't do. And so I think just being able to see each other when we walk down to go pick up our food before we eat in the room, um, when we're able to play games together um, within our meeting room, uh, I think that's built a lot of chemistry between us. And we just, we've gone at it for a, a, a long time now together. And so I think just getting through those tough times together and helping each other push through, it definitely has helped us out in the long run. Thanks. Our next question will go to Cedric. Cedric, please unmute yourself. State your name and affiliation. Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. Uh, congrats, Celeste. Um, uh, all we've heard the last couple of days is the Maryland juggernaut. They're, they're averaging 98. They're going to they're gonna put up 100. Carolyn Peck said they're going to put up at least 80. You guys uh, knew, knew what you were capable of defensively. But it's one thing to know it, but it's another thing to go out and do it. How much motivation did you guys have um, hearing all of that talk and and uh, knowing how good you've been on defense all year? From the beginning, since when we got in this tournament, people continue to say, well, people continue to not say our names. <laughs> people continue to not bring us up in conversation. And I think just from the beginning, you know, we know what we have on this team. We know when we're locked down and focused what we can do. We know... When we, are, when we play together, we know what we can do together. And so I think just all of us, from nobody speaking on us in the beginning to now, people saying everything that they've said, um, I think we just, we just take it in and we, we hear it and we go after it and we attack. The next question will go to Doug. Hey, Celeste, Doug Feinberg, the AP. It felt like a Texas home game with that crowd tonight. Did that help you guys at all? I mean, the 4,000 fans, whatever it was, cheering you on when you were making the run at the end of the game? I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing to um, have fans up in the stands. We've been lucky enough 
as a university to be able to have some fans during some of our games. And just the atmosphere out there, you know, it just makes it a lot better. Um, when you tie up the game and you hear everybody cheering or when you're, a timeout is called and you just took the lead, you know, it's just amazing to hear those fans out there. So I think, I think it definitely has help, it helped us out tremendously. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to go out there and do what we have to do no matter who's in the stands. The next question will go to Danny. Please state your name and affiliation. Uh, Danny Davis, the Austin American Statesman again. Celeste, um, can you take me through that sequence in the fourth quarter? You hit the jumper, Maryland comes down. Lauren, who pretty much had just come in the game for, for Audrey, you know, deflects that ball and Kyra goes the other way. You know, just kind of how big was that, you know, 30-second sequence for y'all? I mean, it was really big. Um, you know, I, I know the work that I put in. I know um, that I've taken shots like that when I'm in the gym by myself. And so it was just a matter of jump, jumping up and like coach says, be a big girl and shoot over them. So that was just in my head. Um, when I left, when it came out of my hand, I knew it was going in. And Lauren, Lauren has done amazing for us in this tournament. Every time that she come in, she's put her all into it and she's given us everything that she has. And we talk about our post players playing in the passing lane and Lauren was in that passing lane today. And she called out to Kyra that she was in that passing lane. She stole the ball, deflected it. And Kyra ended up getting that steal. And, you know, from then we were just like, we just need another stop. We just need another stop. So, you know, we weren't as focused on it, um, but we just knew we had to get back down and get another stop. But it was really exciting. It was a, a big moment for us. The next question will go to Daniel. Please unmute yourself, state your name and affiliation. Hi, Celeste. Daniel Sheep. I'm Texas Student Television. Um, so this is your first time playing the NCAA tournament after COVID last year and everything. Kind of prolonged it for another year, delayed it. Um, as obviously you have uh, more games coming up, at, at least as of right now, is this everything that you um, were dream um, lived up to everything you dreamed about? Yeah, I mean, as a little kid, you know, you look up and you see people playing in March Madness. Um, you look up and see people playing in the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, the Final Four, and it's honestly been so surreal to me. Um, it's just been amazing, honestly. I know that me alongside with all my teammates, um, off camera, we put in so much work. We do so much to get us to this point and to finally be here and be in this situation is just an amazing feeling. But we know we got to put our head down and keep on working. Our next question will go to KXAN. Jonathan Thomas, KXAN Sports, uh, Celeste, uh, just how crucial was uh, Joanne tonight? I mean, you know, she had a big game, and then, of course, she goes out, but comes right back back in. Um, just, you know, how critical has her leadership and her toughness been, not just tonight, but this season? Yeah, I mean, from the beginning, people counted Joanne out. Um, I said in the beginning of the season that people are going to be saying her name a lot, and some of the things people don't notice, she's been our outside shooting presence, honestly. Um, I will feed her all day to shoot the ball, um, to attack the rim. Uh, she's just real gritty, and she is competitive. She wants to win. She has the will to fight and the will to win. And just being surrounded by people like that alongside myself and just everybody else on the team, when you have a team that is competing and willing to win and willing to fight, that just makes everything more, more interesting and and amazing, but she's been a huge role, not just tonight, not just last game, but in every game that we've played this season. The next question will go to Sunil. Yes, uh, Sunil Sundaraj with Global Women's Sports Radio. Uh, congrats, Celeste, on the win. I just had to ask you, balanced scoring effort, Celeste. Uh, I think you and Charlie both with double-doubles. I mean, how good is it, like, you know, just that there are multiple options on this team as far as scoring is concerned? Yeah, it's amazing. You hear so many other teams talk about how they have multiple people on the floor that just can score. I think that we've shown throughout the season that, you know, it can be anybody's game any night. That's why, you know, we have plays drawn up for anybody and everybody. Um, we personally think that we have mismatches. People may think they have mismatches on us, but offensively we have a ton of mismatches. Um, so it's been amazing just playing with people who any, everybody on the court can score at any time. So just having faith in each other and confidence in one another to know that they're going to hit a basket at any time when you need it and just knowing when to feed your teammates the ball and where to feed them the ball so that they can be successful. But just having people on the court that can score 
and forget about scoring. I mean, we all lock down on defense. To know somebody has your back on the defensive end is just an amazing feeling. Our final question will go to Nick. Yeah, Celeste, uh, congrats on the win. Uh, Nick Moss, San Antonio Express News. Uh, I just wanted to ask early on, y'all go down, I think it's 12-3. Um, just kind of looked like the game was going to tilt in their favor. Obviously, y'all fall back. And Nick has talked a lot about the resiliency y'all have showed, especially in, in this tournament. I mean, do you think everything that you put into the last couple of months, did that all show up in the last, you know, 35 minutes tonight? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I just think that we – We've fought together since the beginning with the whole situation of COVID that we're in, and we've been so resilient through that. I mean, I think out of a lot of teams, you know, we haven't really had problems with COVID. We've been really staying safe and staying together and just following instructions. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things. We've done a really great job of um, not getting sick. Um, obviously, things happen, but, you know, we've done a real good job of listening and staying the course and putting our head down, wearing our masks. Um, but... I mean, we just have this resiliency within us as a team. Um, when we get, when we're focused and when we stay together, we know that we can get through anything. So I think just proving that we can get through the year, the regular season, um, the resiliency we had within that, um, I think just coming out here and showing that, you know, we, we had this resiliency in us all along. And I think that people are starting to get on notice about us and just see who we are as a team. Thank you, Celeste, for your time, and best of luck to you in the next round. Thank you. We'll, mm -hmm. We will be joined momentarily by head coach Vic Schaefer. Please use this time to raise or lower your hands as necessary. We will now begin with an opening statement from head coach Vic Schaefer and then go to questions. <laughs> well, first of all, just you, you have to be so proud of these kids and what they're doing, these young ladies in, in their fight. I mean, their resiliency. We got down nine to nothing to start tonight and, uh, you know, They've come a long way. I mean, it, I'm not sure a month and a half ago we could have, have got, dug out of that hole. But, you know, at halftime we talked about it's 32-25. And, and, and I wrote as few notes as I've ever written. Defensively it was transition defense. And we, and, and we can guard them on the half court. We just really believed that. We could guard them on the half We just had to get back. And then – Offensively, we just had to keep attacking, and we felt like we had some areas we could explore and and uh, and kind of take advantage of. And um, I thought our kids executed, boy, some really good stuff tonight. I mean, we had ten turnovers, which I wrote on the board, ten or less. That was our pregame uh, on the board offensively that we had to have. And um, uh, again, just. We had some mistakes. We had some breakdowns. We lost Chloe a couple times, and we lost Benzin a couple times. But other than that, I mean, our kids did a phenomenal job defensively. I mean, hey, I don't have to tell you all here. All the experts had them hanging 100 on us. Um, and that's fine. It, it, it's no big deal. But, again, you, you, you go to saying things like that, and you better make sure you know who you're talking about. And you can't, you don't have no you have no idea what's inside the breastplate of my kids. I mean, those kids are amazing. Their toughness and resiliency is off the chart. And to see them competing right now at the level they're competing at uh, against the teams that they're competing against. I mean, this is typically what our teams do. They get better in March. And, you know, it, it, this team has gotten better. In the last month, we've gotten a lot better. And, uh, again, when you run into Baylor two, three times, if you don't learn from that, shame on you. Uh, you run into an Iowa State and how they guard you, if you don't learn from that, shame on you. And, and so w w these kids have learned, have learned. My staff has done a tremendous job in developing their positions from point guard with Kyra Lambert and, and Ashley to uh, our wings um, to our post players. And, uh, and so I, I just think you're seeing kids that have continued to buy in, continued to work, 
And, you know, we've talked about the toughness thing. It's, it's one thing to talk to talk. It's another thing to walk the walk. And I think they, they want to be active participants in their success. And you have to be. Nobody's going to give it to you. And, you know, I told them, hey, if you don't come out and fight, if you just absolutely don't come out and absolutely fight today, they might, they might try to hang as much as they can on you. But if you'll fight every possession, there's eight five-minute games. And if you'll win those more than they do, you'll have a chance. I was just really proud of them. I mean, you think about it. That's a Maryland team. We held them to 14, 15, and 14 in the second, third, and fourth quarter. And, and, and that's – I'm telling you, they are offensive juggernaut. They can flat score the ball. And our kids – Again, we talked about being connected. We weren't going to do it one-on-one. -on -one. We had to be connected. We had to know what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it. And we had to have the focus to keep them from doing that. And the game had to be where it was because we're not going to win a 90 to 88 game. We're just not, probably not winning 80 to 78. So our kids have bought in. And that's the difference, I think, in our team right now. They have finally bought in. They see what happens when you go to work, you put in the time. The game, hey, the game's real simple. The game will not cheat you. You will get out of the game what you put into it. And our kids have put a lot into the game, especially in this last month and a half, especially our guards. Celeste and Joe, Kyra, they are shooting the ball very well right now, very well. And it's because they've, they've worked on their craft. But I thought my staff did a great job of, of uh, getting them ready. The scout was, was right on. And, again, they do so many things. But there was a couple of things that was their bread and butter, and I thought we took that from them. So, again, couldn't be prouder ever giving God the glory for number 21 with this team. And uh, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll stay for another one, and, and, and that's our motto. There's another one. So let's, let's see what happens there. Now we will go to questions from the media. Please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Please be sure to unmute yourself. The first question will go to Lindsay. Hey Vic, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today, congrats. You know, when you went to Texas, I think everyone knew you were gonna build a program on defense because that's what you did at Mississippi State. How fitting is it that you got to steal and score to go ahead for good in that game? Well, uh, hey, uh, let's don't forget, I did have the number two offense in the country at Mississippi State one year, and I think we had number 11. I mean, I like to score now, and I just soon win 95 to 93 if that's the way it's going to be. I don't, I don't care as long as we win. But with this team, because of, of – we're so, you know, we just don't have a lot of depth, and, and we were so limited earlier in the year with what we could do. Charlie carried us many a night early, but now we've really developed a team, and that's what I told them. We've developed a team, y'all, and, and that's, that's why we're succeeding right now. You can't focus on one player on our team right now because everybody else has really worked hard to develop their offensive game, but defensively, I've said this a lot, you know, defensive chemistry is the last thing you get on a team. And it, it doesn't come without hard work and doing it every day. Defense is nothing more than teaching habits, y'all. And the only way you're going to create a habit is to do it every day. And I know our kids, they, you know, we do some of the same drills every day. But that's what it takes to be a great defensive team. So, you know, for, for these kids – they're in. They're all in. They understand. And I, I, that's what I love about them. They are, they are junkyard dogs, y'all. They are, they are a bull locked in a china cabinet, and they are coming out fighting. And uh, I, I just love them. I mean, I, I couldn't be more proud of them to be their coach. Um, you know, it, it, there's a lot of satisfaction, y'all, as coaches, to see kids do what these kids are doing, to see them grow. Again, to grow is to change. And they've had to change because we're different. You know, we're a different staff. We do things differently. And they've had to learn that. But, man, to see their faces after a victory like tonight, like the other night, and to know that they know it's because of what they're doing and how they're doing it, it's why we do what we do in coaching. The next question will go to Sue. 
Coach Vic Schaefer, Sue Favor with Women's Hoops World. Congratulations, man. You look really happy right now. Um, I just wanted to ask you, it seemed like no one, everybody had counted the Texas Longhorns out tonight, and nobody was giving you guys a chance. So how did you prepare your team and get them to believe in what you already believed? And then how did you prepare to face this potent offensive Maryland team? You know, Sue, I've been in I've been in this situation before. You 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 know that. I've been in a game where everybody thought they were gonna hang a hundred on me and it didn't happen. Yes, sir. And uh, you know, um, you know, it's it's again, it's a it's a mindset, it's an approach. And, and I, I, I told our kids that, you know, one of my favorite movies is for the love of the game. And and one of the things that he says when he's on the mound is engage the mechanism. And I told him this the other night after the game. When you engage the mechanism, you get rid of the noise. It's just you and the coaches, you and your team, you and the game. And, uh, you know, for us, that's kind of where we are right now. We, we are engaging the mechanism. We are focused on us. Nobody thinks we can do it. That's fine. I, I've been in this before, and, and I've come out just like tonight many a time. So it, it's, not un, un, you know, it's not uncharted water for me, say, per se. It is for this team. This team's never been, I mean, I got a lot of kids that never been to the NCAA tournament on this team. And certainly not in the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight. And, and so uh, to see them respond right now is, is really, uh, again, it's, it's why we, we do what we do in coaching. So, uh, again, it, I, it doesn't phase me, but, you know, it's, it's all about your approach in my mind. And, uh, you know, I, I told them tonight, I mean, I think I use the phrase, nobody gives you a snowball's chance in hell. And that's okay. It's no problem. I, I don't care what people think. If I worried about what people think, man, I'd, I'd really be all tied up. I couldn't coach my way of a wet paper bag. But that's not me. I don't care. Um, the proof's in the pudding. What we do and how we do it is what works. And, you know, I run into it in recruiting all the time. People say, well, you go over there now. Y'all are going to work on some defense now. We're, you come over here, we're going to practice about hour 10, hour 15. We're going to get up 500 shots. We'll spend about 10 or 15 minutes on off, you know, on defense. And you know what? Those are usually the teams that aren't here and we're beaten. And so I, I just, you know, I, I don't think twice about it. Hey, if that's what people want to say, you know, hey, it's okay. The next question will go to Michelle. Uh, yeah, for what it's worth, Coach, I, I don't think anybody who watches basketball didn't think you had a snowball chance in hell, for heaven's sake. You know, you're, you're a good coach and a good team. But I will, I, I'll ask you this. You've got South Carolina coming up next, a team you know very, very well. Um, can you just talk about having that matchup, the strengths you, you guys have versus what you know of South Carolina? Well, uh, again, uh, obviously, I've, we've had to go against them as a coaching staff. My players have never played against them. So, um, you know, obviously, tremendous respect for Dawn and her staff. And we've had some knockdown dragouts over the years. And, um, and, and so, we'll, you know, we've got a day of, of practice to get ready and, and one shoot around. And, and uh, again, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I am familiar with them. Uh, but, again, our kids are going to have to go play. Um, well, my staff will do a great job. We'll have a good plan, and, and then we've got to go execute. Um, I haven't seen them play a lot this year, um, and, and so it'll, you know, I'll have to have a little refresher course. But, uh, hey, this time of year, we don't sleep. You know, I, don't, I didn't stay up last night because I was worried about Maryland. I stayed up last night because I was worried about the game. That's just me. I, I stay up at, before every game. I, I worry about everybody. I respect everybody. Um, and I make sure our players respect them because this time of year you're playing the best, and we're going to play another team that's that in my mind's one of the best. And so we've we've got to you know we'll have great focus tomorrow, but um, you know Dawn's Dawn's here, you know been here many many times, and she's got a heck of a team. There's no question about it. Lots of great players over there, and um, and and her staff does a tremendous job. So, but hey, we'll be excited about it. We'll take on that. That challenge, we'll be here whenever time we play or when we play, we'll be here. Michelle, you. can you just state your full name and affiliation so that it logged onto the recording? Yeah, Michelle Vopel, ESPN. Thank you. Thank you.
Our final question will go to Doug. Hey, Coach. Doug Feinberg, the AP. Congrats on the win. How you doing, Doug? I got two questions for you. The first one kind of piggybacks on Michelle's. We were sitting here four years ago in Dallas when you guys pulled off the win over UConn, and you played South Carolina in the final, and you had about a day or two to get ready for them. Does that help you knowing that? I mean, I know your players haven't played them, but you know her system probably pretty well, I would think, that it gives you some edge that it's not some team you've never seen before and a staff you haven't seen before. So that's the first part of the question. Yeah, correct. And at least I'm not getting back to the hotel at 1.30 in the morning like I was after we played Connecticut. You know, it was it was the, we were the late game. We went to overtime. Our kids didn't get back to the hotel till 1.15, and there were 5,000 people in the lobby waiting on us. And so at least we're going to get home a little earlier tonight. And uh, so, you know, I, and I learned a little bit as a coach, you know, what you can do that next day um, versus what you don't need to do. And and so um, my kids will be ready, you know. And, again, we, we'll certainly have a refresher course and, and, uh, and um, you know, get ourselves as a staff ready also. And the second half of the question is, it felt like a Texas home game. I've never been to U of T for a game yet. But with all those fans and the celebration you had afterwards, and what does it mean that it basically was a, a home game for you with the support you had? Well, uh, it's just special because our kids haven't played in front of anybody all year. We, we actually went a month or more where they wouldn't let anybody in the drum. They wouldn't let anybody in the Irwin Center because of the stage that we were at in Austin. So my kids haven't played in front of anybody at home. So for them to have that opportunity tonight, it's really special. I mean, think about it, y'all. Kyra Lambert's from San Antonio, and, 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 and she's getting to do this in front of her parents, her family, her friends. We have kids from the state of Texas. They're getting to do it in front of their family. We've got kids from out of the state whose parents are here. Uh, mamas and dads are here. But to have those fans tonight and experience that with them, and again, you guys have followed me enough. Y'all know I want our kids to have a relationship with our fans. And so when the game's over, we ain't running to the locker room. We're going to get up there and wave. And, you know, in the old days, we'd be taking pictures, hugging mamas, kissing babies, and, and vice versa. And, and we'd stay there till it's over. And in the NCAA tournament, it's a little different because they won't let you do that. But we weren't going to walk out of that arena without acknowledging our fans that were there tonight. And, uh, Man, they were special. You know, the atmosphere was special, really. I mean, I thought they made it special for both teams, but really a, a, a neat deal and a great experience. Again, it's this team right now, what they're doing, y'all, again, I've been doing it a long time, and what they're doing right now is really, really special for, for our staff and I to see their growth and maturity and, and their development and to be a part of them experiencing this because it's, it's, it's not been easy. Uh, again, it changes hard, you know, and young kids can't get past hard sometimes, and they have. And, and like we said tonight, my teams typically, when it gets hard, that's when it gets about right for us. And I thought tonight, starting out 9-0, getting down, you're down seven at half, it got hard. But we outscored them in the third quarter, and, man, I'm telling you, every time out, Joanne Allen Taylor, Celeste Taylor, Kyra Lambert, they are not letting anybody in that huddle think anything but win. And I told them, at the 7-13 mark, I think there was a timeout called. They had caught the ball down in the corner. And I told them, 7-13 for the rest of your life. Let's go. Turn it loose. Let it go. And let's go play. And, boy, they did. So, awfully proud of them. Um, again, it's very, very gratifying and satisfying to see these kids and to see their growth and improvement and just see them succeed because that's what you want. You want to see them have fun, be kids, enjoy the moment. Enjoy, this is the NCAA tournament. Enjoy it. Thanks so much, Coach Schaefer, for your time, and best of luck to you in the next round. Praise the Lord and hook them horns. That's it for this post-game news conference. A recording of this press conference will be posted in the NCAA digital media hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Thank you for joining us.
We are now joined uh, by head coach Brenda Fries uh, for tonight's press conference. Coach, if you could just start by giving us a brief opening statement, and then we will be going to the media for questions. Thank you. Yeah, um, obviously we're we're disappointed, sad. Um, you know, I know for me personally, um, it's, this team's just been a, a joy to coach all season long. I mean, when you talk about uh, through a pandemic to uh, watch this team come together uh, the way they did, the unselfishness they played with all year um, for each other, I think this one hurts even more. Um, but I, th I think you saw, you know, some inexperience today uh, with our team. I mean, the credit goes to Texas. I thought, uh, you know, they were physical, they were aggressive, they, they turned it into a game of defense and rebounding. And um, I thought ultimately they, you know, made one or two more plays in the fourth quarter that uh, were the difference. So, um, you know, obviously disappointed, but I think things for us to be able to grow, you know, with this team um, coming back to be able to gain this experience this season. Thank you for that, Coach. And we're gonna take our first question from Catherine from the Baltimore Sun. Catherine? Hey, Brenda, I'm so sorry about the loss. Um, you know, your girls made mistakes that they do not make late in the game, especially when something's on the line. I mean, do you think they just felt that pressure of, I can't believe this, this is really happening? Um, yeah, it, uh, you know, we made some uncharacteristic plays, you know, and, um, you know, a credit, I uh, thought Texas, you know, defensively, you know, just made a few more plays and, um, you know, this is the experience you're trying to gain. I mean, for a lot of our players, this was the first time on this kind of stage, you know, not having the NCAA tournament last year. So, um, unfortunately, it hurts tonight, but all things that we can gain uh, as we move forward. You know, now that Chloe and Katie are unfortunately technically no longer part of this team, I mean, what kind of fight do you think that they showed in their final game as it's hurt? Yeah, well, hopefully they'll both come back. <laughs> you know, you, you know, everyone gets the additional year. Oh, true, um, you're right. But, yeah. you know, I thought that, uh, you know, they just continue to give us great uh, veteran leadership. I mean, they did all season. Um, they were the pulse of this team. I can't say enough about either one of them. Um, what a huge addition they were for our team and for our program. And, um, you know, it hurts, you know, because, you know, we wanted to be able to send them even further. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the questions, Catherine. We're gonna to turn to Heather McDonough. Would you please identify your affiliation? Hi, Coach Fries. I'm Heather McDonough, NBC4. Um, what was your message to the team in the locker room after that game? Obviously this coming to an end much, I think earlier than any of you expected. You know, um, obviously just how proud I was of them, you know, and uh, of this entire season, what it took, you know, through this pandemic, you know, for us to, you know, go all season long with the discipline that they had uh, in order for us to be able to play. I thought they brought a lot of great joy uh, to our fans, to our program, um, you know, what they created, the buzz, you know, within this team, uh, showing their unselfishness all year. So, so many great things for us to be proud of and for us to be able to build upon as we move forward for next year. Are you even a bit I, I don't know, surprised at how, how this went down obviously texas as you said is a tough team but just the way your team had been playing um does this result surprise you at all well i i knew you know they were going to obviously uh you know take this game down with limited possessions i mean we, we've um faced teams like this late into the shot clock and i think you know when we had some uncharacteristic plays some some turnovers that we typically don't have, um, you know, some some late breakdowns, you know, defensively um, that all gave us pro problems tonight. Are you all set with your questions, Heather? Yes. Uh, thanks, Coach. We'll, we'll see you next season. Thank you. All right. Our next question is going to come from Varan. Would you please identify yourself, full name and affiliation, please? Varun Shankar, the Diamondback. Coach, I kind of wanted to ask, outside of slowing the game down, what was Texas doing to stymie your offense? Uh, you know, I mean, I thought, I thought you saw the physicality. I mean, defensively, they were very aggressive. I mean, we had a hard time getting open on the wings. You know, we had a hard time getting downhill. Um, you know, we, you know, we weren't able to, you know, normally you see our offense flow from side to side. Uh, you didn't see a lot of that. Um, and that was a credit to, to the defense that, that they presented against us tonight. And then that last three by Katie Benz and that missed, 
if you go back, would you want to slow that down and maybe hunt for a little bit of a better shot at that point? Or do you think that was a good shot for that point in time? You know, I mean, I thought it was a great kick ahead to her. I mean, gosh, she's shown all year. I mean, she's, uh, you know, shoots over 50% uh, from out there. So, yeah, her getting a wide open three, you know, I'll, I'll take that any day. Thank you. Thank you, Varen. We um, have time for a few more questions. I'm looking to see if anyone would like to ask another question of Coach Freeze. If you would, please use the raise hand function. All right. Uh, next question will come from Dylan Spilko. Just identify your affiliation, please. One moment. There you go, Dylan. Hi, Coach. Dylan Spilko from Testudo Times. What was it about this Texas defense that made it so hard for you guys to get in transition? Well, I think you, you saw, you know, there's just a ton of physicality throughout the entire game. And so that that tends to wear on you, you know, as the, the game goes on. So, um, you know, an extreme amount of ball pressure, you know, uh, you know, throughout the entire game, you know, the, you have to be able to get open on the wings and um, then heavy help when you go to attack off the bounce. So, you know, a lot of areas that, that gave us problems tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Our next question will come from Lauren Roche. Lauren? Hi, Coach. Lauren from Testudo Times. Um, yesterday, you talked a little bit about how what a battle in the class this matchup was going to be, and it definitely proved to be so. And kind of looking back at the fight that your team gave today, especially in that area, like what do you have to say about that and how you feel? Yeah, you know, I thought we fought hard. I, I loved our toughness. I think um, we had some some untimely miss box outs, you know, that were really costly, you know, late game. Um, but, you know, I, I loved our heart. I loved our, our toughness, you know, trying to, to battle with with the size that they had. And just a quick follow up for you. What does it mean that, you know, even though the season ended this way, that the team still did it in an unselfish way, that this team continued to share the ball and, you know, having the 16 assists on the 24 field goals? How does that feel that that's how that season ended? Yeah, um, I couldn't be more proud of this team. I mean, obviously, only one team gets to, to win the whole thing. I mean, we had really high goals um, and rightly so. This, this team uh, was so talented. But um, tonight we weren't the better team for 40 minutes. That doesn't diminish you know, anything that this team did all season long. Um, you know, they were uh, a joy to coach. You know, I, I can't say enough of, uh, you know, to be in a pandemic. I mean, there, there's not, a be, you know, another team that I would rather uh, be able to, to coach uh, throughout. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren, for your questions. We have, uh, yep, we have a few more minutes uh, for some questions. We're going to go back to Varen one moment. Go ahead, sir. Coach, I wanted to ask, just, you know, late in the game, you guys have uh, a sequence where the, the turnover with Ashley on the pass to me, what kind of went wrong there? Um, you know, obviously timing. I, I think, uh, you know, they did a great job of, you know, really denying that entry to, to the post. And then you guys shot five for 22 from three today. How much of that is just a bad shooting night? And what does that say about, you know, the fickle way that the tournament operates? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, again, I think, I think, you know, they rushed us, you know, quite a bit, you know, at s sometimes we had great open looks uh, that we typically make. So I think there was a blend, but I think, you know, their pressure defensively sped us up for most of the night. Thanks coach. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. We will now go back to Heather McDonough, who has another question. Hey, Coach, I just have more for you, and it's kind of a catch-22. Oops. Sorry, ahead, uh, can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Okay. It's kind of, it's kind of a catch-22. You, you've played so well. You've had these big leads. That's a good thing. Um, but then you had this close game, you know, down the stretch or it, it, tonight. Um, is there something to be said for – not having a lot of those close games, you know, uh, late in the year, things of that nature, and the way the team played the late minutes in the fourth quarter? Um, I, don't, any sense. I don't think, yeah, it, you know, I mean, I think they, they created those spreads, but, um, you know, no, because we've, we've been in plenty of situations and, you know, uh, games that have been very pressure, you know, a lot of pressure. You know, the Big Ten has obviously prepared us, and these guys have been in a lot of, 
um, moments within their their career. Um, you know, for us, I mean, obviously, like I said earlier, you know, this is the first time for many of uh, of our kids when you look at our, our sophomore class that we're going through the NCAA tournament for the first time. Um, so, you know, all of this is just going to make us better. Thanks, Coach. If uh, do we have any other questions for Coach Freeze? If so, please use the raise hand function. Coach, at this time, I don't see any other questions. I want to thank you very much for your time tonight. Congratulations to you and your team for your successes in this very challenging year of competition. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to the media that sophomore guard Diamond Miller will be joining us momentarily. Please use the raise hand function to ask Diamond questions. Diamond, thank you for joining us and congratulations Sorry. on Sorry. a terrific season. We're going to take our first question for you from Catherine from the Baltimore Sun. Catherine? It's Chloe Bibby, not Diamond Miller. I'm sorry. Sorry. I did not know that. I, okay. I apologize. You're right. I, and I was not given that. I apologize for that. No, I was going to say, Chloe, you look so different. I know. I was too. <laughs> I was taken aback. I looked up. I apologize, Chloe, very much. Oh, good. You know, Chloe, I mean, you come back next year. You guys, I mean, basically should be the same team. You know, I mean, this, this could happen again. I mean, this stings, but do you kind of try to turn this towards next year and think, like, we're the same next year, we can do this again? Yeah, I mean, I'm so proud of these girls. They came out all season and fought, and, you know, I think our inexperience did show tonight. Um, you know, this is the first time that they've had, you know, the big lights on them for, you know, a lot of our team. But I think that's great exposure. I mean, you need that, and you need those moments. Um, so really proud of how they fought tonight. But I think this will fuel us, you know, going forward. I mean, that now they've got that under their belt, had the first NCAA tournament. So they had a little bit of taste of it. And um, I think we're going to want to go further. So, you know, just as I said, really proud of them. You guys will keep fighting to the end. I think you can see that in the way that Diamond drove that in that layup right at the last second. Um, but was there a moment late where you started to feel that it was over, that, you know, you guys weren't going to be able to come back? No. I mean, I have full <laughs> confidence in my team. Um, I mean, sometimes that's it's March, and that's just how you know the ball game goes. Um, they made some good free throws at the end. I mean, you know, kudos to Texas. They played a really great, uh, really great ga uh, game tonight, mm -hmm. um, and we just weren't able to finish it out. But I mean, there was no point. I've always got my team. Um, you know, every night I've 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 got my team. So no. Awesome, Chloe. I'm looking forward to next season. Thank you. Thanks. Our next question will come from Lauren Rosh. Lauren. Hi, Chloe. Lauren from Testudo Times. Uh, I asked Coach a similar question, but same for you. What does it mean to you that you went out on this note where you were still playing unselfishly and playing that game that, you know, that team game, that 11 strong game that you've been talking about all season? Yeah, I mean, that's the Maryland style of uh, basketball that, you know, we've talked about all season is that unselfish play. And I mean, as I said, it didn't go our way tonight, but i um, super proud of these girls. And that's just something that we can continue to build on. I mean, you don't have the, you know, we don't play how we did all season. Um, I don't know, <laughs> come out the way we did. It just, those, these things happen and Texas did, they played really great, but this is not gonna, you know, this is not gonna stop us. Um, we're gonna come back hungrier next year. And just to follow up for you, I mean, after the other two losses you guys had this season, you came back some of the strongest basketball that you've been playing. How do you think this kind of sitting over the next few months will do, what will that do for you in a positive way? Yeah, I mean, it's going to hurt, <laughs> uh, definitely. So we've got to go home and, you know, reflect and think on this time, um, but use it as fuel to to get better. I mean, I think we, we got out-rebounded tonight and it was just those little things, but, you know, we had that, we had the moment, we've been under the spotlight now. Um, and, you know, as Coach, Coach Freeze said, we just have to use this um, experience that we got and, you know, move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. And, Chloe, we have a few more questions for you. Uh, the next one will come from Heather McDonough. Heather? Hey, sorry, I just have to quickly unmute. Um, Chloe, you talked about just it's March, but 
was there still some level of surprise after how you guys have been playing and, and rolling late in the season into this tournament? Um, you had the, the early, jumped out to the early lead. Was there some level of surprises, I guess, to how the game went, how the result went um, in your eyes? I mean, I know Coach Schaefer, and I knew how he was going to come out, and um, he was going to have a game plan for us. So, I mean, I wasn't really surprised, and I was really proud of how we came out and how we fought. We really did. We fought till the very end, and as I said, I'm just, just so proud of them, um, you know, to fight through that adversity and because we didn't have our best offensive game tonight. I think, you know, that shows, and, um, you know, we didn't rebound the ball well, but just, again, so proud of, of how we came out and, and we fought that. And I asked this to Coach, uh, what you know, what her message was to you guys. What did, what did you take from what Coach said and maybe what you guys were obviously just been a couple of minutes since everything happened, but uh, what the players may have been saying amongst themselves uh, after after the loss. Yeah, I mean, we know we're better than that. Um, and we're just going to use this to, to fuel us. Um, you know, we weren't happy with how we played tonight. I think everyone can agree on that. But... Um, yeah, these things happen and we just have to move forward with it. I think, yeah, this is great momentum that we can use because it's such a young team and we still have a lot to learn. So, um, yeah, just use that as fuel. Thanks, Chloe. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Heather. Um, we still have time for a few more questions. If there are any from the media, if so, uh, please use the raise hand function. Okay, Varen, we are going to have you ask the next question. Hey, Chloe, really sorry about the loss. On a night like this one where you guys have an abnormal shooting night, how much of that is just it's one game and then how much of that is they did something particularly on defense? Um, well, I mean, we knew they were going to come out and, you know, play play some tough, hard defense. Um, and we didn't have a, you know, a good shooting night, but we need to find other ways to score. Um, you know, that happens some nights and we, we have to find a way to win. And, I think we, you know, we didn't do that by turning the ball over and, you know, not getting those rebounds. Um, so we kind of just, you know, went away from our play there and not we missed a couple box outs and O boards and things like that. Um, but as I said, I mean, kudos to them. They played, you know, a great defensive game. And, I mean, it happened. But every day I take, you know, I take my team and their offensive game over anyone else. When you say they played a fantastic defensive game, can you go into a little bit more detail on what specifically they were doing? I mean, they were just, you know, they were blowing up screens and they were just a lot of talk. But I, honestly, I thought our defense was really good too. Um, I thought we played some really good sequences of, you know, 30 seconds of great defense. Um, we just couldn't execute on the other end. Um, but as I said, I mean, I take my girls every day of the week, um, twice on Sundays. So, I mean, it just happens. Sometimes you just, you know, you miss those three-pointers or, you know, easy layups. I thought we missed a lot of bunnies tonight and, you know, um, uncharacteristic turnovers, but I mean, they're learning things. They're just, we're all still little babies, I think, and they're just gonna, we're gonna take from this and we're gonna learn from it. Um, but yeah, I take my team every day of the week. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on a great season. Thanks. And we have time for one more uh, question. Uh, we will take that from Lauren Rosh. Lauren? Hi, Chloe, just wanted to ask one more for you. You've been in this situation before where your season's cut short in the tournament. How does doing it with this team differ for you after kind of all you've been through this season and how much you all love each other on and off the court? Yeah, I mean, this this is a tough one. I think our chemistry, you know, on and off the court is so great. And so we're hurting for one another right now. Um, you know, as much as it hurts individually, I'm hurting for, you know, all my sisters back in that locker room. So. This is, this is tough, but we're going to bounce back from this and we're going to use this as motivation. So, yeah. Thank you. Congratulations thank you. on a great season. Thanks. All right. We thank the media for their questions. And Chloe, really appreciate you joining us tonight. Congratulations to you and your teammates for all your accomplishments this year. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And that will conclude this post-game news conference. A recording of this press conference will be posted in, in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you once again for joining us, and thank you for covering the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship.